preaching of Jesus. Who said, he said, have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. That's actually written somewhere else, but Jesus said to be as shrewd as serpents and as innocent as doves. In other words, he said to be as evil as serpents in the sense that you've got to understand these people and you've got to be two steps ahead of them and them instead of them always being two steps ahead of you and they are and they know that we're at a point in time when everybody's figuring this out and nobody is believing it even the people that are vested in the establishment that are making huge profits on the 401ks and other investments they have in wall street they know the truth and they know it's built on a hill of sand a mountain of sand you know so you know these might look like doobies but that uh, this is I roll some of my own cigarettes I roll half and I I like to smoke some pre-rolled ones too but anyhow I digress but you know what you need to prepare for is the return of Jesus this is what's gonna happen it's all gonna come down and you know if you can imagine you know God Almighty God a holy God has nothing to do with religion it's all about science just that there's higher forces beyond humanity that are ultimately in control of things imagine how it's gonna be at that time okay it's gonna be fantastic for those that hunger and thirst for righteousness and justice and all good things, the hunger thirst for peace on earth, to, that they can live together in harmony with their fellow human beings and live as children. Like Jesus said, you'll not get to heaven unless you be like little children. We've got to be pure of heart, innocent. I mean, it's okay to watch cartoons. It's okay to read a comic book. It's okay to have toys. It, nowhere in the Bible does it say it's not okay to enjoy creative genius wherever you appreciate it, you know? And it's good to have fun, to play with each other, and to enjoy time together with your family and friends. This is good. Jesus did these things. Turning the water into wine. You know, he liked to go to these celebrations. You know, but, uh, you know, anyhow, back to, uh, you know, what it's going to take. It's going to take a critical mass of not only people that are enlightened, because you could be enlightened and be evil, but it's going to take a critical mass of people that are enlightened and that uh, that hunger and thirst for righteousness and that's got to come you see as the glory of God through knowledge and wisdom and truth and all these things that are coming upon the world increase it, you know it's going to drive out the dark one it keeps exposing it and it gets more and more miserable for those that willfully choose to live in darkness and it's all coming down on us okay and you know uh, the people that, uh, that, that refuse to, to accept the truth are refusing to accept the Holy Spirit of God. This is the Spirit of Truth. This is reality. It's going to kick in here. And it's going to get really wild and crazy because the evil one's going to put up a fight like crazy to try, try to stay in power and stay legitimate. So now that everybody's going to understand economics, and it's very, very simple, very simple, not to get into platitudes and whatnot, but it really is. It, you know, it isn't rocket scientists, and it doesn't take a, a, a mental giant to understand economics. It's really very simple, and it all comes down to capitalism is based on competitive. It's competitive by nature, and it's you know, supply and demand is an intricate part of understanding capitalism, and free market, that everybody is free. The government is not intruding as an authority and if they do we need to understand who the government is because this uh, this term is wildly misunderstood you know what is the government the government is we the people if you're talking about the politicians and the bureaucrats yeah in that sense government's a bad thing okay but if you're talking about the people the government is a good thing and when the government does good things to protect the people here's another term protectionism why is it so bad isn't that the whole basis for our entire armed forces is to protect people? To protect our freedoms? Isn't that the whole concept of the law enforcement to protect us? Okay, so once you understand what this is all about, it's a giant, ginormous scam, okay, of monumental proportions. And, you know, you've got to understand that first and foremost. This is a tool of the devil that tricks us all into believing 
that we need money. But when you think about it, we don't need it. You could take away money tomorrow. And as long as people didn't, keep going, didn't stop going to work, okay, the system could not break down. Money would have no bearing. You just did the same things you do, and you go buy the same things that you use, the food, and it's all free. That's the only difference, is that there's no money. Nobody needs money anymore. How could it break down? Nothing would stop. The difference is you'd go from enslavement to freedom. You know, that would be traumatic if it happened like that. But that's what they're forcing the hand of God to do it like that. I'm saying we could cultivate that direction by sound currency, gradually freeing uh, the captives. This is what would happen because you'd have prosperity. There'd be no advantages. There'd be no disadvantages. There'd be no haves and have-nots. We'd all be haves. I'm not suggesting everybody be poor, like in some, you know, a phony communist or socialist country. I'm suggesting everybody is prosperous. And if you can't go along with that concept, you're on your way to hell. So I'm trying to bring you over to the truth. And the truth is, this is the end game. Is that good prevails. God wins this ultimate battle. And the earth is cleansed like a diseased cell on his body. That good is a more powerful force than evil, always has been, always will be, and you're all going down. All you workers of iniquity, you're, you haters of justice and mercy and truth, you're going to hell. So which side do you want to be on now, folks? Okay, so let's say we have roundly exposed the evildoers, and we see through the lie. These people are laid metaphorically bare naked, and we see the truth. We see the light and we see the darkness. We see true reality and we see false reality. We can step out and literally see through the eyes of a loving God, a loving set of parents doting over us, just wishing the best for all their children. We can see that now. And these people are already ready with the next lie. And what is the next lie they injected this? I, I guess it's going on a couple of decades now. This bit about the climate change. Because there's one thing these people have in common is that they are usurpers. They can't stand just letting the natural course of events play itself out. And the currency is a prime example of that. They will not let the free market work. They will not let supply and demand principles work. They will not let sound currency have a chance because they know the same things I'm telling you. Is that it would solve all of our solvable problems. All that crime all those, the war, the violence out there, you know, all that stuff would just gradually disappear over time as people felt safe and secure and prosperous and free and liberated and happy and joyful. You know, when we could serve one another on our own terms, when we wanted to, how we wanted to, where we wanted to, everything was all about it, us individually being the authority and loving and sharing. Could you imagine if we shared everything, all the houses in this world, how much there vacancy, how much there'd be for everybody? We're so productive. There's a huge glut of housing. There's no shortage. And we could build more instead of people being laid off that love to build houses. They could be building houses with higher quality, build them with love. And the cars, all this stuff would be better and even more abundant. And we recycle and we take care of the earth because nobody in their right mind wants to destroy the earth. These same people that are saying human interaction with the earth is destroying it, overpopulation and burning CO2 are hypocrites. These people are, they're usurpers and hypocrites. They're liars from the pit of hell. Most of them, I believe, are willfully deceiving the public. They know the truth from the lie. These people know about suppressed clean technology. Here's another problem that if you solved it, then these people would lose control. The, the oil dollar is their god. And they don't want to lose their power. They don't want to be rendered irrelevant. That's what it all comes down to. That's why the problems aren't solved. I mean, it, it, it's so heinous. It's so diabolical that most normal people can't wrap their minds around it. It's that freaky, weird, surreal. and that you, But you've got to just understand it's true. It's true, so you have to understand, these people are liars. They are deceivers. They work for Satan, who Jesus called the father of lies. 
Okay, he never owned the earth. He does not own the earth. He never will own the earth. Only God Almighty owns all things. God owns Satan. And he tells them how far he can get with stuff. That's why I believe these accounts, when you hear these high-ranking retired military that, that, that testify, they say, hey, listen, man, there's been these uh, supernatural lights, uh, so to speak, outside these nuclear missiles installations. And they're able to, at will, deactivate all the missiles. Take them offline. I believe that. God's in charge. Read the book of Job. He lets them get away with so much for whatever reasons, just so his name is vindicated, so we know the difference between truth and lies, so you can see, don't blame God when, you know, for dropping the nuclear bomb on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. But notice it hasn't happened since then. It's never happened my entire life. Okay, and, and long before I was born, it hadn't happened. And, you know, and it... I don't believe it's ever going to happen again because I believe God said, at that point he said that's it done you know he's allowed a few little tests and whatnot but notice there hasn't been one nuclear exchange but I believe these psychopaths at the top would love to depopulate the earth and I would refer you to uh, the books these people write guys like Ted Turner who openly will tell you they want to reduce the earth by some 80 plus percent uh, you know, look at the Georgia Guidestones. That's what I would make reference to. They want to get the earth down to 500 million. Why? I don't know. These people are insane. I mean, I, would, I contend that if we were the size of little bitty ants and the earth was a thousand times its size, the same element, the same mentality of people out there would be saying the same thing. So we've got to see through this lie. And these people that are perpetuating this lie and getting our kids to believe this lie, K through 12, if the teachers are deceived or willfully ignorant because they're going along to get along sycophants because they're profiting, they're benefiting with job security, pensions, and whatnot, we've got to expose these people. Everybody better make a stand and jump ship. If you're on the side of darkness, jump ship now. Get off the boat because it's all coming down. And, the, and we need relief for the prisoners of this world, the people that are dying. You talk about the ultimate sacrifice, these people's lives that are out on the street are every bit as valuable as yours or anybody else's. And I defy you to suggest otherwise. You elitist hypocrites, you're the ones that Jesus railed on. You know that? You're sons of hell. You're whitewashed tombs. You're like unmarked graves that men walk over, not even knowing they offend you. You're the type that strain out a gnat and swallow a camel. Yeah, God knows your type, I know your type, and plenty of other people know your type. And you're all going to hell. So you better think which side are you on. This is not a Democrat-Republican issue. This is a political issue. Okay, and it's in the political interest of all the establishmentarians, Democrats, Republicans, and otherwise, not to rock the boat, to keep this ship afloat with duct tape and spit and all this crap you're keeping it propped up with. It's phony. It's all lies from the pit of hell. These people telling us we have national debt, they're walking around with billions if not trillions of dollars. They're liars. Yes, there is suppressed clean technology. Yes, Tesla technology has been suppressed. Yes, hydrogen uh, uh, technology has been uh, uh, been suppressed. By now, hey, listen, listen, I'm not that smart, but how hard is it for me to imagine uh, a miniaturized hydrogen production unit under the hood of your car, perfectly safe, making hydrogen on demand in safe quantities, kept safe. <laughs> it's not difficult, folks. It is not difficult. Look how much they've miniaturized the computer. When I was in high school, that was, uh, you know, a long time ago, uh, less than 40 years, though. And, uh, you know, back then, um, the biggest computer, I mean, my school, my high school, I don't remember any computers. I mean, there might have been a couple, you know, in a couple of classrooms that, that were reserved for the teacher or, you know, uh, the smartest pupil, something like that. But, uh, you know, I don't remember any computers in, in the early 70s, mid-70s. And, uh, you know, but, uh, you know, look at today. I mean, we've got computers on wristwatches, if I'm not mistaken. 
So look how far that technology has come. So the idea of having a compact hydrogen production unit under the hood of your car, where you, you'd be measuring your mileage in gallons, miles per gallon of water, not gasoline, 